This video is brought to you by BetterHelp. Okay, so I was checking out the Wisecrack Discord after the most recent episode of Rick and Morty, and one of our patrons left this comment. This episode was a blast. Corporations taking our free will and marketing our future back to us has never been funnier. This comment is spot on, and it really helped me better articulate what I thought was so amazing about this Heather Ann Campbell penned episode in which Jerry tries not to bang his mom. So today we're talking about season six, episode five of Rick and Morty, Final Desmithation. This one is so chock full of pop culture references and thematic threads that it was hard for us to decide where to begin. I see that I've romanticized a wild animal the same way Margaret Howe did when she jerked off that dolphin. But the thing that stood out most was the episode's exploration of freedom and fate. Th th that's how fate works. It's a field like gravity, but instead of pulling small toward big, it pulls unknown toward known. And in particular, the way our own fates can often feel inherently tied up in the machinations of the marketplace. We'll try to explain in this wisecrack quick take on Rick and Morty. Oh my God, did Cherry almost just f his mom? Okay, before we go on, we wanna thank this video sponsor, BetterHelp. If you've ever experienced anxiety or depression or just generally felt overwhelmed lately, BetterHelp is a resource that can help you feel better. And not to get too personal, guys, but I am someone who struggled with depression for most of my life, um, so I definitely know how it can feel to go through this sort of thing. BetterHelp's network of more than 20,000 therapists are ready to listen to and help you. After taking a brief questionnaire, you'll be matched with a therapist whose expertise fits your unique needs. And thanks to BetterHelp's remote model, you can work with a therapist whose skills might not otherwise be available in your area. Once you're matched, you'll be able to communicate with your therapist within 48 hours. You can message your therapist at any time and you'll receive timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule your choice of secure phone or video sessions to receive counseling in real time. And as someone who's been seeing a therapist for years now, um, it is such a valuable resource. And in the event that you and your therapist aren't a perfect match, you can easily switch to a new one for no additional charge. So join the more than 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with better help by visiting betterhelp.com slash wisecrack or just click the link in the video description. When you do, you'll get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash wisecrack. Now, back to the show. Okay, so a quick recap for anyone who is still just thinking about the Panda Express meth ring. The Smiths are eating at the aforementioned restaurant and taking turns reading their fortunes. They're pretty banal. Family time is time well, oh man, I got the same one. Bill. Until we get to Jerry. You will have sex with your mother. Horrified by the predictive power of tiny pieces of paper inside of stale cookies, he loses it. Mm. Oh, can't do it. Sleepy Gary ruined my gag reflex. And while the rest of the family hits the zoo, Rick and Jerry investigate. After an unnecessary shootout, they end up at the fortune cookie factory, which turns out to be a shady corporation run by a Gwyneth Paltrow, Elizabeth Holmes mashup from hell. Fate isn't fiction. Everything you want can be yours if you ask for it. It turns out she's helming a vaguely cultish company that sells people their own fates with fortunes produced via a chaos-eating aliens poop. A chaos-eating aliens poop. A fortune-fueled gunfight ensues. Jerry gets about four inches from doing full penetration with his own mother, and Rick manages to save the day with a Jerry no-sex mom fortune. Oh, and even if it ruined Rick's immortality, he and Jerry are friends now. Thanks, friend. Friend? Aw. But back to the comment on our Discord. Oh yeah, and by the way, um, we have a Patreon, and if you join, you get on our Discord where there's a dedicated channel to talk about Rick and Morty. You can join as well. There's a link in the description. You get a lot of other stuff too, but mostly you, uh, you get to talk with us about Rick and Morty episodes. This episode pretty explicitly explores what happens when corporate structures first take away or at best severely limit our freedoms and then turn around and sell various types of freedom and possibility back to us. Oh, at a profit, of course. The reason the fortune shitting monster that is neoliberal capitalism is able to do this so effectively is that we think we're fundamentally free and capable of self-determination even when we're just scooping up shit. 
like that scene from Jurassic Park. In this instance, the girl boss CEO with a glass sanded vagina is selling people on the idea that the creation of your own fate or the construction of your ideal future is within your reach as long as you can pay for it. Please, I can get the money, I swear. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Oh God, what does it say? Your penis will be mangled by a frozen yogurt machine at the UN. People are willingly forking over money to this extreme version of a lifestyle brand. You will receive a 6.8% year on year increase? Very nice. Your talents are appreciated. <gasps> when you become junior partner. Which simply serves the purpose of funding one person's extravagant existence. Every day I get closer to an unattainable goal, a one woman lifestyle brand forever. And this type of system where desire is not something to be repressed, you know, like an Oedipal desire to Netflix and chill inside of your mom, but something that has an inherent power is described by French philosophers Gilles Deleuze and Félix Guattari. For them, one of the most genius things modern capitalism does is creating and fostering desire. It's the difference between buying stuff because we feel like we have to and buying stuff out of our own free will because we feel like it'll fulfill our deepest desires. In the case of the episode, the company is creating the desire for control of one's fate. And in doing so, people are inadvertently desiring and paying for the privilege of being controlled by tiny pieces of paper. Almost like uh, how our lives are basically controlled by tiny pieces of paper with the faces of, of dead dudes that uh, I don't slaves on them. I think it's going well, so why? Why ever question the paper? I'll, I'll hail the paper, we bow before you. Cream, get the money, dollar dollar bills, y'all. As Deleuze and Guattari say in their famous informational tract about how not to bang your dad's wife, anti Oedipus, one of the key questions of our time is, why do men fight for their servitude as stubbornly as though it were their salvation? In the same book, they paraphrase Wilhelm Reich, arguing that the astonishing thing is not that some people steal or that others occasionally go out on strike, but rather that all those who are starving do not steal as a regular practice, and all those who are exploited are not continually out on strike. After centuries of exploitation, why do people still tolerate being humiliated and enslaved to such a point indeed that they actually want humiliation and slavery, not only for others, but for themselves? Put in more basic terms, when everything sucks shit, why do we just sit around and take it? And even more so, why do we keep actively fueling the system that sucks all the shit in the first place? The answer, according to Deleuze and Guattari, is that capitalism has figured out a wonderful system that doesn't revolve around traditional types of control and discipline, but around possibility and desire. According to Deleuze, a control is not a discipline. In making freeways, for example, you don't enclose people, but instead multiply the means of control. I am not saying that this is the freeway's exclusive purpose, but that people can drive infinitely and freely without being at all confined, yet while still being perfectly controlled. This is our future. So in creating more opportunities for consumption, a la 200 different types of toothpaste at CVS, we feel as if we are consuming freely while we are in fact being perfectly controlled. I guess at least in our case, we're not being controlled by Elizabeth Holmes and alien poop, so that's something. And in a similar move to last week's episode, which we covered as well, so check that video out if you haven't seen it, we see how Jerry's golden retriever personality is oddly adept at avoiding the symptoms of modern day capitalism. While in the last episode, he avoided the drive for zombie-like productivity by treating his night self with a sense of curiosity and kindness, in this episode, it's a spirit of friendship towards Rick, which Rick eventually reciprocates, that seems to help break the cycle of desire and consumption, i.e. the desire for and consumption of his mom's booty. In the end, Rick gives up his desire to control all people's fates in order to save Jerry from doing the incest. I was immortal! I was immortal for that whole fight! All I had to do was never make a new friend! But what does any of this have to say about our own world? Because surely the only fortune that's ever come true after a meal at Panda Express is you will soon be spending hours on the toilet praying for annihilation. Well, in one sense, it brings back an odd turn to the religious. At one point in the episode, it seems like they're gonna go full Scientology. Want to know the secret to how I changed my future? Yes. Well, once you're a level seven investor, you'll learn that and more. 
Yeah, we're not getting the answers we want here. Human beings used to rely on various gods to help our fate in increasingly unknowable realities, i.e. mythologies that helped create a sense of understanding before we had a scientific sense of reality. But today, we often instead turn to various celebrities, scammers, hucksters, and thought leaders to help us find freedom and meaning in an increasingly unstable social and economic reality. I used to think I was just a regular white woman. Then I discovered I could control my destiny. All white women think that. If you don't believe me, pause the video right now and Google Kim Kardashian plus crypto and, and read what you find. We once made sacrifices to invisible gods. But now, we go into debt purchasing products and services sold by various girl bosses and bro bosses that all promise to help us take control of our own lives. I mean, say what you will about religion, but I never had a priest ask me to buy his signature set of artisanal holy waters. If Deluz and Guattari and Rick and Jerry are to be trusted, it seems like we are caught in a system where our desires can be stolen from us and then sold back to us, all while we get to feel like we're freely journeying towards our own fate. You have to glut the marketplace with pointless fortunes to increase the value of real ones. Control and destiny for a price. That's the Fortune 500's fortune. <laughs> Good news is that the same force of desire can be our way out of the whole mess. But the bad news is that the other guy knows that too, and he has a lot more money and power than us. Well, in the meantime, uh, give your mom a call and tell her that you miss her. But what do you all think? Has fate gone from a magical force to a capitalized product? Can we desire anything other than our own subjugation to the system? And how close was Jerry to ending up inside of the loins from which he emerged? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much again to our awesome patrons for your support, and more importantly, your top-notch Rick and Morty commentary. Now, if you wanna join our Discord and get all the perks that come with our Patreon, please click the link in the description and check it out. And if you wanna chat Rick and Morty with us after new episodes air, check out our Squanch stream. It happens every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific right here on YouTube. Like this video as if a fortune cookie told you to and subscribe as if it's the pure object of your desire. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you later.